Welcome to the only podcast for piano teachers just starting out, Piano Teacher Primer. My name is Angela Toon. Keep listening for the prime pro tips you can use with your own students right away. If you're listening to this podcast and you've thought about teaching piano, but you just haven't taken that step quite yet, or maybe you're feeling the pinch of finances and you're wondering, where are all these potential students hiding out? Come to my next masterclass. This one's going to be totally free. That's right. It's called How to Find Piano Students. Next week, Thursday, April 25th, 10 a.m. Mountain Time. Link in the show notes or at AngelaToon.com. Some more piano teaching success stories coming at you, but instead of from my own students, we have three of my own clients. Piano teacher successes from all over the country, from Utah to Kentucky to Georgia. They share a little bit about their different studios and how they run things and some things that have helped them along the way. So enjoy hearing from Renee and Kirsten and Kelsey. Hi, Renee. Hi, Angela. <laughs> So you were just telling me that you started teaching piano in eighth grade. I did so at great. the request of my piano teacher who is still teaching piano. Wow. She's in her seventies. And she actually played as my guest, uh, at a recital about three years ago. That's a good idea. And she just rocked the piano. She's amazing. And, uh, I still chat with her through Messenger. She's in my hometown. Uh, it's about an hour and a half away. But anyway, yes, I started teaching her daughter. And then it dominoed from there. I would add my students into her recital. And at one point, I think I had about 12 students by the time I was a senior. So I taught and that's how I made money oh, from eighth grade to 12th grade. And uh, then I stopped, went to college, taught again in college. My degree is in elementary education oh. and um, actually have three degrees, elementary ed, master's, and then an education specialist degree. Oh. Yeah. But <laughs> so I had like four stints of teaching piano. I always come back to piano. So it's funny how it's, I've come full circle. Oh, so I taught yeah. school for a combined 15 years. Oh, and um, yeah, I stayed home with my kids. Um, I have two children, adult children, and uh, stayed home with them and taught piano during those years and then went back to teaching uh, in the public school and parochial school. And then now I'm back at teaching piano. I think it's going to be my retirement job for life. Retirement so. job for life for the win. I love If that. I can get to, uh, I think my teacher might be like 77 and she has about 18 students still. She's still teaching. Amazing. She loves it. And that is so, amazing. I don't know if I'll make, make it to 77, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. And Renee has come to several of my master classes that yeah. I've done. So would you just share briefly um, just a little bit about each of the master classes and how it's helped your teaching? Um, I went to your skills class that you offered and gathered numerous ideas from that. And that was my goal last year was to develop how I teach scales and do that uh, better than I had before. Um, you know, growing up and being in private piano, I had played scales. I knew the, the purpose of the scales and always, you know, run through a scale for any piece I'm about to start so I can get the, hear that sound in my head, but I didn't really know how to go about teaching the scales. So I didn't grow up learning pentascales, but that's something that you addressed and you have the scales pass off chart that I love. And I've been using that with my students this year. And I loved teaching pentascales. And as um, I think I told you, I we've built it with erasers on the uh, piano. Then I have a walk on piano floor mat that I've oh, used. And we put those same erasers on there to build the pattern and and then the students have all, um, you know, earned stickers on their chart this year and uh, just really taken off with that. And it has 
helped uh, to teach, you know, major and minor skills and how you make the happy sound and drop the third and then it's the mysterious minor sound. So as we've blocked chords and dissected our recital pieces, we fall back on, oh, that's that C minor sound. And so it's really helped um, with um, making those connections. And um, of course my older students are, you know, doing full scales that yeah. um, anyway, we're doing great. I love and that. Love the part. Yes. Yeah. Makes I it a little fun, you know. So happy. And you were so nice to send me an email about how it's been helping your students. I really appreciate it. Yes, that. it has. Yes. So thank Good. you for offering that. And as for the chords, I I haven't um uh, used that quite as much, but we'll I'll get there. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I and I've used this with adults. I've been teaching a couple adult students who want to learn the chords better. And I yes. teach them that one, two, three, half step. And then right the chords so they can mm -hmm. figure it out from from there i've got these dads i've got all these dads in my neighborhood it's so interesting but anyway and then the memorization class and you were yes. not only attended but you were able to give me some suggestions i loved that so much with the shapes idea so i really appreciated that so to be continued on the yes. on the memorization but um I think give I us need a little to review out on that I think I need to go out and buy some uh, color sticky tabs uh, like you have because oh, yeah. I felt like I was writing on my students' music, uh, of course, with a pencil, so it's all erasable, but I like the idea of the color tabs. Do they stay on the page as well? They do. That's yeah. good. I found these ones on the dollar store that even have a little point to it so I can like point to a certain note. Sometimes oh, yeah. they don't have them, and then I just buy the regular Post-it brand. Yes, and I'm going to mark the rest. I have a student who keeps forgetting the the rest on beat four. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna... just having some color just is like. Whoa. And what she's right. talking about is we yes. talked in our memorization class about using the different colors to help the kids memorize using colors to identify parts that are similar but different and oh it does this and then this this it, does, it has a yellow and a blue and a yellow and a pink and then that helps them yes. remember the different endings you know you could do that for first and second endings if they're getting mixed up on those right just, just sometimes adding color the, makes it click the other thing we did the other day is um say we had the heart to begin with then when it the same um, section happened again, but an octave higher, we just put an arrow after the heart. So then that became the heart with the heart arrow up. Up to remember that that is an octave higher. So that seemed to help. I love that. I love that. Well, Renee, thank you so much. And uh, you are a true success story. Oh. <laughs> teaching piano and, and then all your years of education too I'm sure you have do you have kids coming and talking to you oh hi I remember yes. you were a teacher oh some of my former students are nurse practitioners and physicians and yeah some of my students from years ago are Saving different lives. Students, my different teaching years so I love keeping up with them once a student always a student yeah. right yeah I yep. love that. Keeps you young to be with those kids. Yeah. So Yes. And we are talking one-on-one -on -one is kind of nice when you've had a room full. Yes. I love it. That's why I say this is my retirement job. I love that. <laughs> I'm too old to be going back into the classroom. <laughs> Exhausting on your feet all day. We can see. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Well, enjoy that retirement, Renee, and I hope to see yes. you very soon. Okay, thanks, Angela. Welcome to Kirsten Rogers. And we know each other in real life, too. Hi, Kirsten. Yes. Hello. <laughs> so update us on your studio and your teaching. Yeah, so um, my studio is a bit different than some like typical piano teachers um, because I work for a company. So a lot of the stuff that... Um, 
is like a big hurdles in the beginning of teaching, like getting students and like marketing and um, developing a policy letter, like you described in some of the uh, piano primer stuff. Um, I I don't have to do. Um, That's nice. Yes, it's very nice. What group do you work with? Um, the both method piano lessons. Yes. So you're a traveling teacher. I am. Yes. yes. And I do agree with you about the cons that you mentioned of doing that. It's hard to, I look like a one man band, like going into <laughs> some houses because I'm just, I love to bring a lot of equipment. So, um, but yes, yeah. I am a piano traveling teacher. So. But then that takes care of, that takes care of a lot of the headaches and a lot of the different business side things. You don't have to worry about any of that. Yes. And that is so wonderful for me, especially in the beginning when I'm like getting my feet off the ground and um, I just get students delivered to me and I don't have to worry about that. So it is really wonderful. That is great. So that's Vols. Is it V-O-L-Z? Yes. Okay. I'll put that in the show notes in case there's other teachers that are interested in teaching under that model. Okay. That's awesome. not something I've mentioned on the podcast. So this is really valuable. Okay, great. To have out there. I know I've seen the ads. They market a lot to the elementary schools and and things like that. So I bet they do get a lot of kids interested. And parents love when teachers come to their house. Yes. I just had a neighbor stop me from a house that I go to, a neighbor's from that house. And they were like, you travel? That's so wonderful. <laughs> like, where can we sign up? I was like, yeah, it's... <laughs> It's somewhat, it's kind of a headache for me sometimes, but it's really good for the parents. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It is. But that's a trade-off. And if you have really happy parents, you have some really happy customers. Yes. So that's so good. Yeah, we can work around the other things. Get you a big old backpack or something. Yes. Roll, travel, <laughs> uh, travel rolling cart, maybe. <laughs> yes, I do need one of those. Parents joke of me with me about that they're like you need a wagon or a, a wagon or like a, a like a trailer to just like have everything organized in there and yeah you know, trailer. something like that <laughs> you need a trailer <laughs> I love it so tell us um some things that you mentioned the piano teacher primer course mm -hmm. and tell us some things that that has helped you with um and I and I have so many different things in there so that if you don't need the business help you know, I've got these other advice things. So just share with others what has been helpful for you. Okay, yeah. So I think the, the number one thing that has been helpful for me is your organization with how you keep track of, with what you put in students' binders. I actually have bought a ton of binders at the DI and use your scrapbook cover and the um, organization that you have for assignments inside. And the parents love it. They love that so much more than the notebooks. Good. Um, yeah. Good. So I love the organization. Like I get to put scales on the tops and the warm ups and then their pieces and they can check off every day and then parents can use a little corner on top. Um, I just think it's beautiful layout. And Yay. Like Isn't that so <laughs> funny because that's just what I use with my own students. Like I created it because for my own self <laughs> and what yeah. I wanted to do. And I made them like 20 years ago. And then I just, you know, made them look a little cleaner mm -hmm. and cuter to put them on this course. But yeah, it's literally what I use. And then I love how it's like, I love how it's vertical because I like to write in bullet points. You know, a notebook mm -hmm. is like sentences, it doesn't yes. like fit my style. And then, yeah, a place right there for them to mark when they've practiced and getting mm -hmm. them to do that is another story. But Yes. <laughs> but it's nice with you going in the house, you've got the parent right there and you can, mm -hmm. you can check in with them right away. Yeah. Yes. Anything is... else you want to share from that? Um, I liked, I loved the, um, the teaching tips portion, because I think that was one of the most valuable sections for me um, because I loved the emphasis on like mindset and being present and only praising like work and effort and a growth mindset um, because I think I, I actually read some of that book mindset by Carolus Dweck and I am a hundred 
percent in agreement with that. I, I never will say, oh my goodness, you're so smart. You did that so well. I'll just be like, wow, you put so much effort into this. I can tell you've been practicing something like that um, to show them that that's where um, being a musician comes from. It's not innate or um, you can't, like how you said, you're not just, you're not, you're either a good musician or you're not, that doesn't exist. Like there's, um, it's all about the work that you're willing to put in. And I noticed um, there was a lot of emphasis all, as well on like getting the parents involved and um, and their practice and how the students practice and communicate that with them and um, establish that right from the start. Because um, I think I kind of make the mistake of like being feeling like a bad guy to like um, be like this, this child you're not your child's not practicing this enough or not doing what I ask and just doing the fun stuff um I like um and I think I need to realize that they actually probably appreciate that you know that that acknowledgement that that feedback mm -hmm. yeah um and because yeah, I think I've that, had that experience and I and I it was a student that was practicing one thing really well the thing that he liked and then the other thing not so well. And he was actually playing both pieces for a festival. So we needed both pieces to be. So there were two separate families. One, I just said, so and so, we already have a relationship. So I didn't feel like I needed to sugarcoat it at all. And I just said, so and so is 90% ready on this piece and 10% ready on this piece. And I just made it very factual. And, and, she, and let me tell you, she got him to practice that other one. Mm -hmm. I think parents sometimes hear the piano and they think everything's fine. Mm, yes. You know, so having a specific thing for the parent to listen for or to ask their student about. And then the second family was kind of a similar situation, actually, where it was another piece that he wasn't practicing. And and she just said, thank you so much for, for letting me know. And And I think if you don't feel like you're the bad guy, then you then you aren't. You know, if yes. you're just like understanding, I think I did a podcast about this recently. If you're kind of understanding with the parent, like I get it, life gets crazy. Um, by the way, we've got this deadline coming up. Um, I'd like to have it memorized by this. I'd like to have it learned by this. And um, yeah, and yes. not, not that anything's bad or somebody did something wrong, but like, here's our plan for the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Cause, and oftentimes I'll get parents that approach me and say, well, my child will practice, but he'll practice it once and then be done. And I'm just like, yeah, that's something that I wasn't really sure how to handle. Um, because I, I just, so sometimes I'll disguise like the repetitions and be like, play this on six different C's on the piano oh, that's a and good idea. do it hands crossed or yeah, stuff like that. And oh, um, my own kids will try to do that. My own children. Oh yeah. Just like <laughs> You're not done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So having specific, so that's something I've texted parents. Listen for so-and-so to practice this five times, three mm -hmm. times. Or if there's a certain part that they're not good at, I'll say, listen for this second page part mm. three times or whatever. Yes. Yes. I think being specific with the parents is one of the other things I have benefited from, from uh, the the piano teacher primer and uh just knowing that yeah that that's what's gonna really um create the most success um yeah yeah i've heard it described as a triangle the parent and the teacher and the and the child and yes all three of us are working together it's gonna be a success mm -hmm. Yay. yes Kirsten, I love that so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for letting me do a mini interview with you today. Of course. Yes. Thank you for having me. And good luck with your traveling one man band piano teaching. Okay. Thank you. That's awesome. And cut. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. That was perfect. Thank you well, so thank you. much. Yes. I had a lot more. <laughs> like ready oh, to you just, do? To do you want to say more? um sure yeah um I just I can I, splice it in there real easy okay sure um just Go a couple more things um I think the other thing I want to touch on is like you said ask yourself why you want why you are a piano teacher 
uh, and I kind of thought that this wasn't as important as it as um, it really is. Um, and I think on my bad days, I like to kind of convince myself that I am really unsuccessful and I'm just inexperienced and I'm kind of just stagnant and the only like I am like need to improve at a pace which I cannot. Um, and then I think reminding myself why I'm a piano teacher um, can help myself be more present and um, and remind myself like the other question, like what is a good piano teacher to me? Like writing this out and realizing that I check off a lot of those boxes, like some of those things I still need to do, but um, the fact that I'm even asking myself this question and driving myself towards that is um, really helps because that's the one biggest thing I struggle with as a piano teacher is, is um, being present in the lesson and not going down um, just these rabbit holes of like dwelling on my inexperience because um, I'm very new. So <laughs> yeah, that was um, one thing that um, helped me in answering mm. those questions. That's so good. I also heard it wasn't with piano teaching, but I heard this in another realm that if you're just a step ahead of a person, you can teach them. Mm. You don't have to be like on this pedestal. Mm. If you're a step ahead, you can lead somebody to that next step and that next step and that next step. And you know, you you know how to play the piano. Yes. <laughs> so you're, you're a lot of steps ahead. Mm hmm of these kids so yes they're there <laughs> and i think i think the last thing um was the book recommendations you went the method book recommendations i was so lost because a lot of a lot of parents will ask me that it's you yeah. said it's the number one question um and i'm just like i feel like <laughs> i've put so much pressure on myself i'm like if i don't choose the right method book then they're not going to progress as fast and if i don't have the method book myself then i can't do the duets because i need to practice and I'm just so worried about choosing the right, the right ones. And um, yeah, having those recommendations and, and the pros and cons, like I noticed that students will get, I, I kind of haven't really like picked it out, but when you mentioned that they get stuck in like a five finger pattern of like C, D, E, F, G, cause a lot of the songs are just in that five finger pattern, but that's not how it is in music. Um, I have been starting to do like improvisations with like five finger patterns and other keys and um do like wrote pieces yeah stuff that escapes from that that um just that constant five finger pattern so that was helpful mm -hmm. yeah and i like to describe it like there's no one perfect method mm -hmm. the the most important thing is that the kid keeps going and mm -hmm. keeps practicing and they will figure it out along the way and um and then also any weaknesses, you know, any weaknesses or differences between the methods, you can you can supplement with different, like you did with your improvisation or different books and, and any of those strengths can be overcome. Mm -hmm. You know, there's this one method that I use and they don't do hands together for a mm -hmm. long time. And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, they need to get this coordination built in early. So I just give them other pieces that are hands together. Mm -hmm. You know, that would be harder kind of than their method book, but it gives them that gives them that a little earlier than than the method book would say, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So any any method book um, cons can be overcome. So yes. it's more like what you want to teach and what you want to hear, what songs you want to hear, mm -hmm. and what, what you want to. What do you want to teach? What do you want to be working with? Yes. That's more important, I think. And then consider the different personalities and ages of the different kids and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, yeah, kind of like not re completely relying on a method book and kind of stepping outside of that and using uh, your own in um, curriculum and things mm -hmm. like that. Uh, yeah. And I loved, also loved the tip where you said, don't talk too much. You can actually record yourself and time yourself. I was like, yes, I need to do that. Guilty because as I, charged. I struggle with that so much. Yeah. Guilty as charged. I talk too much. Yeah. Yeah. Like, have I some of the to... student talking and then have more playing than talking in general, I think. 
especially these active kids, sometimes they, they're not going to just sit still and listen. But if I'm like, okay, do this. Okay. Try it again, doing this and just teeny little words. And then they play, 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 lots of play. Yes. I and the that's improvisation, that's a great way to have more play and less talk. Mm -hmm. Yes. It also helps a lot with like doing repetitions. And sometimes I'll give them like little rhythm cards that I'll set at the top of the piano and be like, use this rhythm in your improvisation. Ooh. Um, and then they'll just sit there and like do the rhythm on one note on the five finger, like F major pentascale. And they'll just go up it like 10 times. And I'm like, if I asked you to just play that 10 times in a row, you would be pretty bored, I imagine, with some of them. Um, and then, but if I'm here doing like this chord progression and we sound like pretty good, so. <laughs> That's so good. With and this mm -hmm. creativity, like there's a real movement, I think, toward knowing the chords and the pedascales and then pro improvising on those. I wasn't really taught that. I had to learn it as an adult. <laughs> so mm. if these kids can learn it, again, see, look how good a teacher you are. You're teaching <laughs> well, things you. that I never learned as a kid. Mm -hmm. There you go. All right. Anything else before we wrap up? Um, No, just thank you. Um, yeah, I appreciate all the, all the advice and all the guidance and yeah. inside of that. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you. You're helping me out today. Oh, great. Yeah. Thanks, You're welcome. Kirsten. Welcome to Kelsey Blackman. I'm so happy to meet you in person. We've been so emailing nice back and forth and trying to find a time to connect. And I'm so happy that we finally did. And yeah. what state are you in, Kelsey? I'm in Georgia, in Atlanta. In Georgia. Oh, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've interviewed somebody else from Georgia. Anyways, so that's happy. What's the weather yeah. like over there? Uh, beautiful springtime weather. It's, mm -hmm. yeah, 60s and 70s right now. It's gorgeous. So yeah. good. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about you and like your teaching and sure where you're at right now. Yeah. So I, um, I've kind of been teaching since I was a teenager, but I found your podcast for, it was for piano teachers just starting out. And I was like, well, I'm not really just starting out, but it's only been a couple of years that I've started doing it more seriously. So, um, I, I have two little kids at home and I wanted to start, um, I wanted to find some sort of part-time flexible way to bring some income in. And I knew that I could teach and I enjoy teaching. Um, and my mom is a piano teacher and has always been teaching piano and teaching elementary music. And you survived the experience. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> so I survived the experience, but also had a built-in mentor who could help me do it more, more on a more serious level. And so, um, is she then, still uh, teaching to this day? Yes. She was an elementary music teacher for a while. Um, but anytime she was not doing that, like after she had my sister, she took a break and taught piano privately. And that was always her fallback for part-time work. And so it kind of makes sense that I'm doing that too. Um, but, uh, so I was looking for part-time work and a school where my husband used to teach, uh, reached out and said, Hey, we would love to offer piano lessons after school for our students. Would you like to teach piano at our school? So that's what I do. Two days a week, I go to the school. Um, and right when school lets out, I start teaching and it's really convenient for the parents because instead of, you know, having to make a bunch of drop-offs, they can let the other siblings play on the playground while the, the one sibling takes a lesson and then they go home. And it's just really, it's a really great setup and it's worked out very well for me. Um, oh, that's fun. Yeah. Cause I would not be able to teach from my house. We don't have a piano here. We're in an apartment, um, a second floor apartment. So we're not moving a piano up the, to the second floor. <laughs> um, so yeah, it gives me a space to teach and gives me kind of a built-in, um, pool of students, um, potential students. And so, um, that's been really nice. And that's, it's been two, three years. It's been, I think this is my third year doing it. Good. Um, maybe more than that. I actually can't remember. Um, yeah, I know I can relate right, to around, right around COVID time. So I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know when that was, but anyway, COVID time kind of lingered on longer than we all liked. Exactly. So exactly. It's a time warp. Um, a fuzzy. 
Yeah. But about three years I've been doing it. And this year is my, my biggest, I have the most students. I have 10 students now. Nice. Um, 11, if you count my daughter who I kind of teach at home sort of. Yay. So yeah. Yeah. That's so good. Is this the same school that she, does she go to this school? She will, she will start in the fall. She starts in the fall. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's yeah. fun. Yeah. Are you able to take your kids with you or do you have someone watching them while you go? Uh, the past couple of years, my husband comes home on one of the days and works from home. Perfect. And then another day we have a babysitter. So perfect. But next year I might see if I can bring them because my daughter will already be there. She'll be there. Maybe I can bring my other son, my other kid. And then, yeah, they yeah. can just hang and teach. So, yeah. I had Most one kid that would be able to do that. He would just sit yes. in the stroller with his trucks and he'd let right. me do my thing. Right, right, right. But my um, youngest is a little not able to be quiet. <laughs> still, for yeah. anything, still, I'm like teaching yeah. right before I talk to you. And I'm like, you're going to go in your room right now. And that's yeah. all. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes next year. But yeah. Congratulations. I love that. Thank you. I love that idea. It, do other teachers do that or is it just you at that school? Um, I found out once I had started doing it, there's actually another teacher who does it on two other different days. So Perfect. yeah. So yeah. then parents can find a day that works with mm -hmm. them. Yeah. That's yeah. so cool. And you know, this yeah. is not anything I've shared on the podcast. So this is fun to be yeah. able to share also like another, another idea. Way. Hey, you're yes. in an apartment, you don't have a piano and you don't even have to like rent. Do you have to rent the space? You don't have to pay not them. To use the they are so kind and so generous. Yeah. So that's really awesome idea. Yes, yes it is. That. Yeah. It is a little tricky carrying my stuff back and forth. That's the only downside. Yes. is that I can't just build up my studio stash of music and books and games and all those things. I have to find a way to bring it with me, but, yes. but otherwise I was a traveling teacher when I first started and yeah, yeah that was the hardest part is yeah. parting everything or in um, the lesson being like, Oh, I wish I had this and such, but then right. I just bring it the next week. Yep. It was okay. Yep. It always works out. So. Yeah. That's so yeah. good. So tell me just, how like the podcast and the piano teacher primer course and tell me how some of those things helped you even though like you said you weren't like beginning beginning teacher yes i am so excited to get to tell you about this because i've been meaning to write you and just thank you because oh. i found your podcast a year and a half ago I, whenever you started your podcast, I found it like when you only had a couple episodes out. Oh, awesome. So, yeah. So it's been fun to kind of like feel like I'm one of the early adopters of <laughs> Angela Toon's podcast. Um, Hello. So, <laughs> yeah. So I've been listening um, for a while now. And finally, last summer was like, okay, I've got to get the primer course. I think, I think it'll be worth it. And, um, it definitely has been. Even before I did the piano primer course, the first lesson video, that's yeah. the number one thing I was going to tell you about is that that I've stolen that from you. <laughs> Not stolen. I have adopted. Steal away, and, lady. Steal away. Yes, I love it. Um, in fact, my daughter, when she was four last year, she did the three black bears as her recital piece. And it was yeah. so cute. Um, it was really, really cute. And now all of my beginning students do that and yes. we just really love it. So, um, the way I do first lesson has, has radically shifted thanks to you. And, um, the, the course itself was super helpful in, even in ways that I didn't expect. There were some really helpful tips about the business side of things. Um, that is, ob I mean, maybe not, obviously that is definitely one of the, the, um, aspects of piano teaching that is hardest for me, um, you know, creative brain and just, you know, it's hard to, to keep, stay on top of all that. And so, um, like, I, yeah, I don't even know how specific you want me to get here, but just thinking through some of the logistics, like it never occurred to me that I should write out like a policy letter that I know, I don't know why that never crossed my mind, but, um, my mom never did that or maybe she did. And I just didn't know it anyway, <laughs> a policy letter. And, um, so that was good. And then, uh, how to like keep track of, 
think you said you have separate bank accounts for your mm -hmm. business, for piano and for personal. And it's like, oh, that would be so helpful. So, um, it's all of nice. that. And you can yeah. transfer yes. to your personal anytime. Uh huh. So just having it in that one. And then I, that also helps me to not feel bad about buying stuff for my students. Right. Exactly. From that account. So mm -hmm. it like makes, total sense. Yes. Yes. Um, and just helps keep it organized and clear in my mind. Um, like it's easy to see. So, um, but the other thing that's been, that has been so helpful, um, about the course, especially is I keep going back to it, um, to remember like what you said, I thought when I first started it, I was like, Oh, it'll be like the podcast. I can just listen. And, but then you started talking and I was like, Oh no, no, I want to write all this down. Like I want to, you know, <laughs> Like I need to be engaged in this, like, like a course, you know? Um, and so it's been really great to go back and like, what were those books that she recommended? And what was that, that, um, teaching thing? And yeah, and, and I, that's a big idea yeah. of it for me. I don't plan on yeah. taking it down for that reason. So that people right. can go back, refer to it because there's different yes. things you're going to need at different times. Right. Right. Or stuff that I've just forgotten about from when I listened to it a year ago. So Yeah. yeah. So it's been really great. Yeah. But I just, I, I mean, since I have you here, I have to tell you again, how grateful I am for your freely sharing so much, you know, um, like, I feel like you get so much out of the podcast, even without the course. And I almost like, it's like, I was like, I don't know, is the course going to be like the podcast, but there is so much more in the course and it was a hundred percent worth it. Oh, I'm um, so happy to hear that. Yes. Yes. Hey, so. Kelsey, this is so <laughs> awesome. And yeah. I want to have a new thing to share just from having yes. you on. And I didn't even yeah. know that this was happening. So surprise yes. for all of us and happy day. <laughs> so yes. great, great stuff. So p student or teachers, potential teachers out there, if you need a place to teach, try your local elementary. See if they'll yes. set up a little program for you. Yes. You've got kids that are already there and ready to go. Mm -hmm. Yep. Love it. Yeah. Thank so much. Thanks, Kelsey. Yeah. Thank you so much. I enjoy, really enjoy enjoy teaching those kids and your Thank cute you. little babies. <laughs> okay. Thanks for being with us with this success stories. And as you're creating your own success stories in your family and in your teaching, you might need some students to do that. So I have another masterclass coming up. How to find piano students. And I'm not only going to share what I've learned and what I've done, but what other people have done. So this one is totally free. You just need to enter your email address so I can send you the Zoom link. It's next week, Thursday, April 25th at 10 a.m. And the link's in show notes or angelatune.com. Before you go, a quick note. Your dedication to piano education is keeping the music alive. If you've found value in our conversation, please leave a rating or a review and share it with a fellow piano teacher. Together, we're changing the world one student at a time. Until next week, play on.